Hi everyone, this is Wolf Branch Homestead. Just a short video as it's been really windy and hopefully you can hear me okay. We're about to walk up on the hill here and show you some sedge broom that's growing. If you look in a lot of the pastures around here, you'll see this growing in quite a bit of them and sometimes overtaking it. It's really seen as a nuisance and people have a hard time removing it, but we wanted to give some purpose to this. Now it's actually called sedge broom because people do make brooms out of them. Not very commonly, but when I was a kid at my grandmother's farm, my cousin and I used to walk around in the field and we'd see this growing and say, hey, that kind of looks like a little broom growing there. And we'd cut a little bit of it, bundle it up in our hands and pretend we had a broom and we were sweeping the floor with it. Little did we know the name of this plant, let alone that it was actually used for brooms. So we decided to take this idea in adulthood and say, hey, we've been making hand brooms out of pine needles. Why not try giving some purpose to the sedge that's growing up here, kind of taking over. And a lot of the time this area right here is actually sprayed, but I wanted to get to it while some of this was actually growing and try making some hand brooms with it. So we started making a couple of them. We'll show you a little bit later on in the video where we have a bundle of these we're going to be putting on Etsy and then a larger broom that we're going to put up at the flea market booth. So let's walk up here and see what the sedge looks like up close. Whenever you're walking through this area, you have to be very alert and make sure that you're not stepping anywhere near snakes. There's a lot of growth right in here and we want to be very careful to make sure we're not coming into contact with any of them. We've seen a few cotton mouths this year and one rattlesnake, so we just want to be really careful and keep our eyes open. So right here we have some of the sedge actually growing. We have some of the bigger stalks of it and we've got some smaller pieces right here that aren't quite mature. Now when I'm making the really long brooms, I'm going to be using something like this with a thicker stalk at the bottom. When we're making the hand brooms, we'll go to some of the thinner stuff over here. Now here's one of our hand brooms that we've made. And again, we'll show you a little bit later on what they look like up close. But that's what this is coming from are the stalks of the sedge. Now, we tried experimenting and making some out of the really thick part down at the bottom here. Then we go to the middle once we've trimmed that off and use the middle to actually make some. And then using the very thin top and just experimenting with the different textures of the brooms by doing that. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of a patch here. Not as thick as some of the areas we've seen. When we go up in North Alabama, there's a pasture we go by that has a lot of Hereford cattle and their field seems to be overrun with it. So we always see it out there every year. And again, it's really considered a problem plant, but we wanted to do something to give it a new purpose. So for this patch that we have in our area, cutting it and turning it into brooms. And especially when you start studying up on the plants that are in your area, they have some even some apps on your phone now where you can take a picture of something and you can help identify what that is growing in your area. It's really neat to be able to identify all of these plants around you and learn what they can be used for. So after identifying this as sedge and that it was actually used sometimes for broom making, it really helped renew that imagination into making something with it. So remember to really Think about things, think about what you can do with things. Be creative. That creativity can really lead you into some neat ventures. Don't be afraid to experiment with things. Again, this is the very first time that we've actually made a little hand broom with it. We've got one of the little hand brooms sitting in the sedge right there. But we're curious to see how these function for people and what they use them for. We'll try them out here at the homestead, but we'll see what other people think of them too. So we'll have some offered up to start with in a little bundle and we'll make some more and sell singles of these just to see what people kind of do with them, whether they're displaying them or they're actually using them for sweeping or they're using them for painting, especially with the ends down there where it's got that thicker texture to it, where you might be able to use it to dab in a painting or paint little blades of grass with it. We're really curious to see what people are going to do with them. 
hopefully when people see this sedge, they're not just immediately disgusted by it now. Hopefully people that see this and might see some out in the pasture, they might just cut this and make something with it. We really hope people use their creativity and think about what they can do with these things that are normally considered pest, waste, something like that. Again, like how we work with deer hides, where a lot of the time people are harvesting these deer and they're getting the meat, but they're throwing the hides away. It's just considered a waste product, but tanning them gives them a new purpose. The same with the sedge. It's just normally considered such a nuisance, like we said, but here's a little thing that you can make with it. You can make these and maybe give them as a gift to somebody to display for the holidays, or you can make some and paint with them. You can keep one over there, like we talk about, by the coffee pot, and perhaps you spill a little bit of the coffee or the sugar next to your coffee where you're making in the morning, and you can sweep up that mess with it. There's no telling what you can do with these, and hopefully, again, people will look at this and not just see a nuisance. They might see something they can create something with. So now we're going to move on and show you these little hand brooms and the larger broom up close. Remember, as we put in our Etsy listings for hand brooms, please make sure to keep them away from small children, pets, and any heat sources. So make sure not to leave them near the stove or the fireplace. Don't put them near any electrical outlets. And make sure to put them in something and seal them up where that small children and your pets can't get to these hand brooms when you're not using them. Another thought as we get ready to show you these brooms up close is that a lot of the time when we ship out our hand brooms, the pine needle ones we normally make, we'll wrap a rubber band around the edge just to keep them grouped tightly together to help keep them in shape for shipping. But hopefully that might also serve as an idea for when you get to painting with these. So you can leave them spread out by removing the rubber band or keep it on there tightly and group them together just to change how you're actually maybe painting with these dabbing them to create a texture something like that so there's another quick idea is that you can take these and either remove the rubber band or leave it on just to affect how those ends are grouped together depending on what texture you want this is the very first brooms that we've made out of sedge i started off making a small display broom the longer one here and this is some of the thicker pieces that I cut that were a little bit longer. And we're going to put this up at the Antique Mall booth. But we started off how we do on the hand brooms. And we made a small grip down here and spiraled it around. And also had a small area up top just to help keep it all kind of close together there at the end. And we used a rubber band to keep it all together so that it doesn't get frayed out or bumped into something like that. So we'll do this one at the booth just because it's really long to try to ship something like this. And we want them to be affordable when we offer things on Etsy. So this right here, we'll probably put it up there for about the same price we normally do for the hand brooms. Just because it wasn't so hard to make. So we'll probably put it up there for about $5 or something like that. And we'll continue to make more of these as we harvest some more sedge. But this was pretty fun to make. And I've only got this one in mind at $5 just because this was the first one I've made. And I want to make them in a better style. I want them to look a lot nicer and be something really neat to have on display in the home. Especially for fall, winter, um, Thanksgiving season, Christmas season, things like that. I really want to be able to enjoy them. Now here we've got the actual hand brooms and you'll see they look very similar to the ones we make out of the pine needles. So over here we're starting off with the tallest one. These are the really thick pieces from the base of the sedge and this has really you'll see thick ends as well. Now with the pine needles we're going to start off with that sheath down at the bottom that holds the needles all together so that gives it a little bit of thickness at the bottom that we wrap the twine around but then as you go up the needles they get thinner and we'll cut off those pointy tips to make it a flat surface but you'll notice that they're a lot thinner than what these are going to be so we start off and have a group of the actual sedge and we start off with the bottom part so we cut off the bottom and make a hand room out of that then the middle of it 
becomes the next hand broom. And the very tips become the fine hand broom at the end. So we start off with the base, the middle, and the top. So you'll see that we get different sizes to that hand broom, to the edge of it there, or the end of it rather. And then this one right here is very, very fine because that's the top. And then this one right here, a lot thicker. So these would be really interesting to experiment with for painting. We have a lot of people that order the hand brooms and actually use them to try different textures in their paintings. And we think that's a really interesting idea. Apologies, it's getting a little bit windy here. We've had some high wind over the past few days. But we're hoping that people will use these and start sharing how they work for them functionally just like they have with the pine needle hand brooms. So the sedge hand brooms, we're really curious to see how people use them for texture painting because of the differences on the ends, just to see what people use them for when they paint and what styles that it creates. And also what people use them for in similar manner like the pine needle hand brooms where they keep them over near the coffee pot to sweep up a mess of maybe a little bit of sugar that's spilled in the morning time making your cup of coffee. Or like one of our viewers, Ginger, does. She's ordered a few and she uses them to sweep up small messes with bird seed if she ever spills a little bit while refilling her bird feeders. And that's a really great idea. And there's so many different things you can do with these, even if it's just displaying them. We're curious to see also what the color change looks like on these because these were made fresh. What it looks like if you cut them and dry them for a little bit or something like that. So these are our experimental first ones that we've made. Another thing in this bundle that we've made is a little brush. And what we did is use an empty 22 casing that's been fired and we clamped it around some of the sedge to make like a little brush out of it. And what I want to figure out is on these 22, the spent shells, how to get the other end off here so that we can actually clamp maybe a small stick in there and make kind of a little natural paintbrush out of it by recycling, repurposing these 22 casings. Some people refill their shells and things like that, but we don't. And if we ever use one, I try to find little crafts to make with them. But I think that the pine needles will actually do better with this because they're going to be more flexible and you can get a lot of them in there to get that paintbrush texture. But we kind of did this because, as you can see, again with those stiffer edges there, I think it'd be interesting to use this and dab it in a painting to create kind of a raised texture or to make little dots and things like that in the painting. So we want to see what people will be able to do with something like this. But again, it's just been really interesting to actually work with this and we really look forward to seeing how far we can get with the sedge and what kind of things we can make out of it. But this has just been kind of an experimental thing. So again, we're going to have these on Etsy available as a set, these three hand brooms right here and then the little one right there. It'll be a set of four and you'll get them all together for one price. I haven't decided just yet so check on the Etsy shop and you should see when they're available how much we've got it listed at. want to do it as a good little deal where that way us learning how to make these somebody can benefit from that and get all of them together. And then again we'll also have the big ones that we'll start offering at the antique mall booth and we hope that somebody will really enjoy them. We thank you for watching as we talk a little bit about our experiment with working with the sedge broom and making things with it and hope that you'll continue to follow along with this. And let us know if this is something that you actually order. If you're one of the people that's watching and you order the little brooms, let us know what you use them for. And we hope to offer more of these as we get to working with it a little bit and get better at making the brooms. Again, we've been making the pine needle hand brooms for quite some time. And this is just our first round of making sedge hand brooms. So hopefully we'll continue to learn more with it and share that with you. But we thank you for watching and hope you have a wonderful week.